Imposter Syndrome and Context. Lecture Overview. This lecture will look at the current understanding around imposter syndrome. It will focus on imposter syndrome from a social perspective, and it will highlight the value of considering different contexts and different perspectives, not just focusing on the individual's experience of imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome and the individual. Imposter syndrome refers to the notion that some individuals feel as if they are not deserving of their accomplishments. Such individuals therefore feel like frauds or imposters. Imposter syndrome is often linked to marginalised groups in society. Current research to date focuses on mainly on the issue of the individual, pointing towards individuals for the roots and solutions. Feenstra et al. 2020, by contrast, argue that there is a need to focus not just on the individual, but on environmental factors. Feenstra et al. argue that there is a need to consider different perspectives. So far, imposter syndrome has been understood from a psychological perspective and there should be a shift to considering imposter syndrome from a social perspective, looking at society and the structures of society, interpersonal factors, and the role of institutions too. The rest of this lecture will explore some of these concepts in a little more detail. Firstly, the psychological perspective. Psychologists have predominantly depicted imposter syndrome as a personality trait that originates just with individuals who experience imposter feelings. This approach is strengthened by the terminology. Describing it as a syndrome focuses on the dysfunction of the individual. Solutions from clinical psychology therefore tend to focus on fixing the individual with therapy. By contrast, in the social perspective, Feenstra argues that previous work should be complemented by a focus on the wider social context or setting. Feenstra et al. argue that people do not interact or exist in a vacuum, so social context greatly influences how individuals feel about themselves. Although earlier research such as Clance has acknowledged that imposter syndrome might be shaped by social context, research to date has not examined this systematically. Society and stereotyping. A person's position in a social hierarchy can influence how they feel. Belonging to, or more importantly, feeling like you are from a lower group in a social hierarchy may mean that you identify as an imposter. Research has identified underrepresented groups such as women or individuals from ethnic minorities and also highlights that these groups can be subject to negative stereotyping. One example of such stereotyping is that historically women are often perceived as lacking the qualities of good leadership, which tend to be identified as masculine. Feenstra et al. therefore stress that social groups someone belongs to and the status of these social groups could be very significant in triggering feelings connected to imposter syndrome. Feenstra et al. point out that how people are treated by self-relevant others is an important precursor to imposter feelings. By that, they mean that the interactions you have with others shape how you judge your own value or worth. Holleran suggests that how people are treated in a workplace, for example, can affect their confidence and engagement. Feenstra et al. suggests that individuals may be more likely to feel like imposters if they are treated as such, and that these interactions can either exacerbate this, so make those feelings worse if they are treated in a way that affects their self-esteem, or they could mitigate this, so reduce these feelings. And this is why Feenstra argue that this is a really important area to explore. Institutions. Imposter syndrome may be more prevalent in specific settings or institutions, such as corporate institutions like businesses, educational settings, and government institutions. Lack of representation at different levels in organisations and a lack of role models at different levels may lead to feelings of imposterism. Research suggests that a lack of representation can lead to doubts about one's suitability for certain occupations and positions. 
This research suggests that institutional structures may cause underrepresented group members to question their place within certain institutions that might be occupied by other dominant social groups. This therefore increases their susceptibility to feel like imposters when in those institutions. One example of the differences in representation is in healthcare and medicine, where women are overrepresented in areas such as nursing and underrepresented in areas such as surgery. So, to conclude this lecture, Feenstra et al. in their paper argue that there is a need to rethink how imposter syndrome is understood, both its causes and the solutions to overcome this. Imposter syndrome is not just a dysfunctional syndrome that an individual experiences. Instead, imposter syndrome is often the result of specific social contexts. Therefore, Feenstra argue that future research should explore this and could potentially lead to systemic change.